edition. It is now our opportunity to welcome in ESPN college football analyst and national champion Trevor Maddich for another Maddich Monday on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Trevor, what was better, BYU's overall performance or their royal on royal uniform combination on Saturday night? Uh, you know what? It, the performance is the best, but the uniforms are a close second. I love the royal blue, although my wife is an artist and she did correctly. She said those are actually cobalt blue but that's closer to the royal blue than navy so that's i i love that look now if they can just go to the blue uh royal blue and white pants that would be perfect now trevor you're stirring up so much controversy this whole week athletic uh you know they're gonna be talking wait is this cobalt or is it royal uh but that's maybe the only problem going on with BYU football right now so far two and oh Ranked 22nd, BYU stays in the polls after basically everyone uh, comes back into the AP poll. What's your reaction to BYU so far this season? They've been dominant, and it's complete the way they've been doing it. I mean, that we've seen teams that are looking good, but they're struggling on one side of the ball or the other. BYU so far has looked dominant everywhere, and they have really earned the respect of a whole bunch of jaded football people out at ESPN, whether it's uh, analysts who have played the game or whether it's broadcasters who've been around for a long time they love the way that BYU respects the game they love the way the players and coaches go about their business and to earn the respect of some of these people is really something and so I think that the way that they are playing they've been dominant on the field but the way that they do it continues a tradition at BYU that impresses people that are very difficult to impress the newest top 25 out from the Associated Press, and here comes the insurgence of Pac-12 teams, the Big Ten, the Mountain West, yet BYU only drops four spots, and they remain in the top 25 at number 22. Do you feel like that ranking is fair and deserved based on BYU's strength of schedule? I think it's fair because this is a year that you can't really count strength of schedule like you would in past years. Had this not been a pandemic year, we're talking about a season where they play Utah, Boise State, Minnesota, Michigan State, Arizona State, Stanford. There wouldn't be a question about strength of schedule. But there are a lot of teams that have really struggled. And Houston, I don't think, has played yet. They've had like four consecutive openers canceled because of the, or postponed at least because of the virus. And so this is a season where strength of schedule needs to be, I think, put in the back seat a little bit. And you look and see the eye test, how the teams play. I kind of think that the committee will go about it that way when they have their final rankings on December 20th, because you might have an ACC champion that played 12 games. You might have a, a Pac-12 champion that played seven. Now what do you do, right? And BYU is sort of caught in the middle. I think everybody understands that ranks, that evaluates, that it's not BYU's fault that the schedule did what it did. The teams that BYU has played so far, they're on scholarship too. And BYU went out and took care of business. And I think that is the standard that they'll be judged by. Yeah, margin matters, and we talked about it last week. BYU not not putting up 60 or 70, but winning by, you know, 35-plus and whatnot is is always a, a dominant performance. Yet, uh, when you look at who's BYU is playing the rest of the year, we've talked about, hey, we feel like BYU is going to add in November. Tom Homo, the athletic director of BYU, told uh, 1280 The Zone in Salt Lake City this morning, he feels like he can be selective. He doesn't want to play just anybody in November. And then we're hearing last week, Hey, Boise State, BYU, there's a shot on November 7th because Air Force is playing, uh, who is it, Navy or Army? Army. Uh, so there's an odd man out. So BYU might get an opportunity to play a good game or two in November that could help their cause should they still be undefeated. They might, and you can look forward now and look at other teams' schedules and try to find matching openings. But I think it's more likely that you'll have cancellations or postponements that will come up at that time, and it'll be a last-minute ad, much like Navy was for the opener. Keep this in mind, too, though, that BYU is an attractive ad for certain kinds of teams. Teams in the Group of Five, for example, that are ranked, that want to bolster their resume, might want to add BYU late if their schedule comes open, if it's possible, if BYU remains undefeated, if BYU remains ranked, because it gives that opponent a chance to face a ranked team, BYU, and impress the committee. And whether or not they make the playoffs, you're talking about New Year's Six, you're talking about better bowl games, all kinds of possibilities that playing a schedule that adds a team like BYU could give them, and especially in the group of five. Since they lost most of their non-conference games against Power Five schools, BYU would be a very attractive consideration for them if the schedules meet.
ESPN's Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation for another Maddich Monday. Trevor, you have clamored for more from Zach Wilson, saying you want to see his progression in the downfield passing attack. Did Zach Wilson give you enough on Saturday night against Troy with his career-high 392 passing yards, or is there still something there that you want to see in terms of development? Well, as great as he was, that was a career day for Zach. He still is not nearly as good as he's going to be. The impressive thing about that game, besides just the spectacular highlights, I mean, Gunnar Romney's catch at the one-yard line, that's an all-timer. That was phenomenal. Diving catch, um, perfectly thrown ball. That was He could have been covered by anybody by any three guys, and that still would have been a completion because of where that ball was placed. It was beautiful. A lot of throws like that from Zach Wilson in that game. The the thing that I want to see him continue to do is continue to improve, continue to develop that chemistry, but guys going back to sort of the beginning in full circle, the impressive thing about it wasn't just the catches. The impressive thing was that they came so early because it's hard to have chemistry when you don't get spring ball the way you normally do, when you can't go out in the summertime on your own and throw with the receivers or you're limited that way, when you're limited in fall practice and summer camp, then all of a sudden you come in with your three top wide receivers gone, your All-American pass receiving tight end out with an injury for the season, and you've got to develop chemistry with a whole new group of pass catchers for the most part. And for that chemistry to take such a leap from game one to game two, is phenomenal. If they keep growing, then BYU, BYU is a force now. They'll be an even greater force. And it just makes me wish that the schedule had been what it had been before because BYU with the defense the way it's playing, with one of the better offensive lines in the country and running backs that are so much fun to watch, and a passing attack that clicks, that's a BYU team that's tough to beat for anybody. And I think that's one of the reasons that they've remained ranked even with the addition of the Big Ten of the Pac-12 schools and the AP poll, because pollsters see that. When you look at what BYU would have played and who they're playing and whatever, we're, we're, we were always hoping, okay, they need to get over this seven-win hump. Like, that's not enough. You're, you're just barely above 500. Yet BYU is playing a schedule that is a little bit lesser, of course. It's what they could put together. So what, what do you think BYU needs to do to do something special this year? And, and does it include that they do need to add some quality competition to be able to at-large their way into, say, hold on, a New Year's Six? Okay. The, that's a very good question. And I think for it to be a special season, they don't need to be in the New Year's Six. They don't even need to be undefeated. They need to continue playing the way they're playing. But if they play the way they're playing, they have a very good chance of sweeping. But it's one week at a time. It's one quarter at a time. It's actually, for the players, one play at a time. As fans, we watch the games and we, we think of the season. We look at the schedule. We wonder what could happen. And even with this schedule, if they sweep this schedule, it will be an extraordinarily special season. They've already had to deal with coronavirus in the same way that other teams have in terms of the limited preparation. They've had now to deal with guys being quarantined, and they hopefully won't continue that, but they may. And if they're able to take care of business through all that, I think they should get tremendous credit because it's not just a matter of defeating teams on the field. It's a matter of defeating the virus, about having the discipline to keep it out of your ecosystem and your program, and then the luck, or at BYU, they might say the blessings, to keep it from dominating as well in the in the program. For it to be special, in order to get into the New Year Six, if we define that as special, BYU would have to pick up another probably couple of games against teams that are either ranked or close to being ranked and continue to dominate. And then they might need a little bit of help as well because the strength of schedule, you know, it's, it's not going to be a big factor as it was with the committee. And they're the ones who decides who's in the New Year's Six. But it still will be a factor when they get into that 9, 10, 11, 12 team to round out the New Year's Six. So I, I don't want to put the pressure on them that the season is only special if somebody else puts them into a, a bowl or ranks them a certain way. If they take care of their business under all the obstacles that they're facing, if they continue what they're doing, this season will be as special as any season BYU has ever had. We're talking with ESPN's Trevor Maddich. Uh, Trevor, as good as the offense has been, and within the nature of football, we look at scoring points and 103 after two games. It's incredible. What about the BYU defense? What's working so well for the BYU defense through two games? They've got stars on all the levels. I mean, Kyrus Tonga, 
Kairos Tonga is so much fun to watch. He just, he just, he, he, watching people try to block him is like w watching angry children try to block a, a, a building. They come up and they swarm around him, but he's like, ah, whatever, you know, you're just, whatever. That's Kairos Tonga. He's just an amazing force in the middle. And then other guys on the end have actually stepped up and developed some pass rush. I was really impressed with the organic pass rush against Troy. But what really makes this thing fun to watch, and I think what makes BYU's defense special this year, is the linebackers and safeties are so active. There's so many playmakers. There's so much speed overall top to bottom there. And with Coach Tuiaki calling the plays, you can utilize those guys. You can line them up in certain places, and they've got the speed and the range to end up someplace completely different by the second step of the quarterback. And that kind of range creates all kinds of game planning possibilities. So when you watch all this stuff happen, they come and hit you in the side of the helmet that you don't expect them to be able to reach. And that causes problems for offenses. Could you have blocked him, Trevor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah Kyrus? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, he'd have been crying at the end of the game. He'd have been, he'd have been begging me to stop. Uh, actually, you know what? I am really fortunate to not have had to, uh, to not have had to deal with him. I don't think I'd be 6'5 right now. I'd be about 6'2. Although Brad Smith was our nose guard in the national championship. Um, and I will tell you this season, Brad Smith in practice was the toughest guy I had to go against all season. Mm. And the Michigan nose guard was one of only two Wolverines in the history of their football program to make first team all Big Ten all four years. And that national championship season, the Holiday Bowl, was his second season. So he was already first team all Big Ten for the second time. And Brad Smith, our nose guard, was tougher. Mm. I think that helps James Empey because whoever he goes against in the game ain't going to be Kyrus. Hey, well said. Great perspective, <laughs> Trevor. It's always nice to catch up with you. We're glad that you're still 6'5 today. Yes, thank you. Me too. <laughs> ESPN's Trevor Maddich on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Coming up.